Hi everyone, um, happy Friday. <laughs> so this video is going to be a little weird. This weekend is going to be a little weird. As, as it feels like the, um, I feel like my magic word for 2023, like everybody picks a word of the year. Mine's just a, I think mine's a phrase and it's just wait and see <laughs> because it just feels like it's been nothing but that for the entire year so far. Um, so this video split up a little bit. I'm going to try to do this quickly because I was going to try to do it from the couch and it would have involved a really complicated setup and I have a lot of trouble getting videos from my phone to the computer where I can use it. Um, and I've been really antsy relying on audiobooks all week. I just, I'm still exhausted, but I'm just tired of just sitting. <laughs> so I'm trying to compromise and what little energy I have, do a short video and then just do nothing else the rest of the day. So we're going to see how this goes. Um, of course, this is going to wind up longer because we know I like to talk. So there's three parts to this video. The first part is going to be me going over my planners. For July, I have a coloring planner and then like just a life planner in general. Um, going over those and some of the things I do in there. Um, then the second part of the video will be what I plan to try to color in August, ideas. Let's not plow up plans because right now, again, we are in a wait and see pattern and I've colored maybe two or three color by number images this week and that's all I've had the energy for. So um, we're going to talk about ideas that I had for August before I started feeling sick and maybe it'll I'll be able to bounce back quickly but we'll talk about ideas and inspiration basically <laughs> the third part I actually do a face-to-face -face, um and I talk about it there but Kathy from spicy cat colors um really uh, I saw her video and she does a lot of face-to-face -face videos and just talks about how much she likes to see her coloring friends do face-to-face -face videos I used to do so many um a while back and I haven't I've been wanting to do more I just haven't had the time or the setup for my phone I need to come up with a better setup um, but of course I picked today one of the worst days I've <laughs> been sick to do a face-to-face -face because that's just how I roll I'm a rebel um, so no makeup hair in a ponytail just just me and kind of just filling you guys in on what happened this week, what happened with the doctor yesterday, and what's going on, and just, I tried to keep my rants down, but I am very frustrated. I'm very tired, and I'm very frustrated, and yeah, right now, I'm just, you can watch that video if you want more detail, but right now, I'm just in a wait and see pattern. There's nothing the doctor really wanted to do, or could do. And rest is the key, except for steroids. And now because of the steroids, I can't take ibuprofen, which was like the one thing that was helping me. So yeah, don't get, okay. Anyway, y'all can watch that video if you want all the deets on that. Um, so yeah, I'll have timestamps in the bottom like I typically do. If you just want to jump from one section to the other, if you don't want to listen to me rant about my health or talk about my health issues, because it is not a positive <laughs> video, I completely understand, um, but I try to show all the sides of Michelle on this channel and just be real with y'all and so, um, and try not to shy away from that. So, um, but this will be, I'm trying to be positive with this piece um, and um, well, as positive as it can be given current circumstances. Okay, enough of that journal updates oh well um planner updates so quick summary in june the beginning of july my first half of the year was awful and i just felt awful and just felt like everything was out of control why doesn't that sound familiar didn't seem to take a month for that to go back to that way um feeling like everything's out of my control and just feeling really negative and down and stressed 
and in July I really wanted to try to achieve better work-life balance, um, build up some good habits. I wanted to switch back to the points system I did with my books last year because book buying is still a, a big issue for me because when I get stressed book buying and book supply buying in, in a way are my favorite hobbies when I don't have time to color. So I was hoping by creating a point system, I could cut back my buying a little bit, which we'll talk about um, how successful that was. It was really successful last year. So, um, but just wanted to keep up with the planner, just keeping very few things, trying not to overdo it um, to start. And so I started doing these in June. These are two bullet journals. All of the supplies I'm gonna show you that I'm using and stuff come from Hubman and Chub Girl. I'm gonna link them down at the bottom. They do like planner sets, stickers, um, random stickers, pins. They do themes and collections. And I love them. They're just the cutest. I just, and they make things a lot easier for me to set up because I'm not, fully committed yet to like putting a whole lot of time and effort into building like fancy spreads and stuff. So their um, journal packs make it a lot easier um, for me to pretty up my planners without having to put a lot of effort in. Anyway, so first we're going to talk about my coloring since this is a coloring channel. Um, and I talked about this briefly in my completed pages, so I'm just going to lightly touch on it. Um, June was a pretty decent month. Um, I usually keep a monthly calendar where I list like um, when I do videos and on the days I color. Past months I've had trouble keeping up with this on a regular basis. I did great keeping up with this for July. Um, got We got a lot of videos like these last few weeks where I was filming for a lot of videos. Um, so um, I always just think that's neat. This set is the Dino set from Hubman and Chub Girl. Um, you can see it's got like a sparkly washi tape and stuff and it's just very cute. I also use bullet journal type stencils. If you guys need some specific links to those, let me know. Um, but yeah, June was my dinosaur theme. I got two buddy colors done. I haven't messaged Poet Spice yet, but I assumed that we were just gonna move ours to August because I don't think either one of us are done yet. Um, a couple of hashtags. Of course, we've got Watercolor Summer 2023 going on, co-hosted by myself and Tammy Colors too. That goes from July to September, so we're still in the thick of that. And then I had a couple tags I did participate in for the month, so I was very pleased by that. My point system, this is what I was talking about. The goal in June was to find productive things that aren't work related and assign points to them. So that could be something as simple as clearing off a bookshelf or loading the dishwasher. For me, anything because of my fatigue and my just constant stress around work, I just haven't been able to do a lot other than work related stuff. So if I got on the elliptical, if I did a video on here, I gave myself points. Um, when I start the system up, I try to be really generous with my points to build momentum so that the next month, you know, over a couple months, then I can cut back the points a little and make it a little more challenging. Um, so like five points is a five to 10 minute task, 10 points, 10 to 30 minute, and 15 is like 30 plus minutes. And I kept a running tally over here. Um, and I did really good. I ended up with 585 points for the month and um, I had 10 left over at the end of the month when all was said and done. So we saw my completed pages. Um, I did create these right at the end of the month um, and I'm going to make these part of my monthly spread, completed pages, stats, and new books. Um, and this is where I calculated yeah, it was 10 points, what books I got, and then like what mediums and stuff. I kept up with this last year too, and I really liked keeping up with these stats. So June, coloring wise, was a really good month for me. Um, I was very pleased. I, I got back into the enjoyment of coloring, had some more pages. I had a lot of fun, had a lot of pages that were a challenge. Like I like a mix of that. So I was full throttle, very, 
very, very much momentum going into August. And I had all these plans for videos and coloring. And then Saturday, I started feeling sick. And it's just, I don't know what that means for me right now. I know it means I'm very limited in what I can do. So I'm being stubborn, though. August is my favorite theme from the Hubman and Chub Girl collections, which is the Cozy Cat theme. I actually used them for my very first spread back in March um, when I was just trying things out. I didn't really keep up with this well. That's why I was saying July was a really great month in that I not only came up with a set spread that I think is useful for me, um, but that I actually kept up with. So um, August is Cozy Cats and it's just this really cute pack you can get and you can pick any month you want so I picked August and like you can get habit trackers um these are little me time stickers little doodles the weeklies um and you'll see I use these themes in my coloring planner and my personal planner um just to because these are you know <laughs> not inexpensive sets and so I get as much use out of them as I can but it's got all these cute little random stickers and we've got washi tape that you'll see me using that also comes with the set finally I wanted a chance to use these stickers that Tammy gave me um sent me in happy mail a few months ago where did I put them I keep losing them but you can see two of them on this page they are stinking adorable every one of them is just the cutest and some of them have really cute sayings and like here's a hello autumn they're just very cute and this and of course the cozy cat um i will probably pick cats regardless of the month just because i want to fill it with these stickers but um so these aren't part of the collection but i'm going to use them anyway I typically use Tombow markers, by the way, for my colors. Um, I find these work the best with the planners. Um, and I actually bought another set of Tombows because they were still half price. <laughs> so now I have plenty of, I have no excuse not to use them. But we've got cracking coloring and videos again. I might even start like writing in a few little like maybe a book name or a page name or something just to keep up you know another way to keep up with completed pages man you can already tell i'm starting <laughs> come on michelle i'm stubborn i don't want to go lay down and listen to audiobooks i'm tired of it point system um this washi tape's not from hubman and chub girl this is a washi tape that i got from too many games um in my supply haul last month i talk about the store i got this from and another cute little cat picture um so this month for points things are going to get interesting when i am sick obviously rest this feels like mono at the end of the day i feel like i either have mono again or it's a mono flare-up it just either that or myocarditis some sort of viral infection um, and I know after it being a week and I still feel awful that this isn't just going to go away in a few days. And so I'm trying to plan the month around that rather than just give up. My therapist was so proud of me <laughs> and I am too. I'm proud of me, damn it. Um, instead of just giving up and not doing anything this month, I just decided to reframe how I did my point system this month. So instead of focusing just on productivity items like this video and stuff I'll still count towards points for sure but if all I do is finish a, a page this month I'm going to give myself points for that I think Kathy from Spicy Cat Colors does that like she earns like pennies or a nickel or something for every page she colors and so many she can get another book or something and I like that idea this is a month where I'm just not I have a feeling I'm going to have to make myself rest a lot. And so I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. So instead of just giving up and not doing the point system, I am going to keep at it. We're just going to include completed pages this month. So like a color by number page will be five points. A standard marker page will be 10. And then like a really extra, extra page with like paints and pencils will be 15. 
Um, and I can keep up with that in my head, so I didn't have to list it down here. I still have 25 points, gets earns me a book. I did try to work Monday or Tuesday and Wednesday a little bit, so I did list that here. So anything that is me not resting, I actually need to update it because I did a lot of planning. I finished my planning yesterday. I'm just going to be more gentle with myself this month, and I'm still earning points, and I'm still doing things, but... And it's, st I'm still trying to keep the momentum, but instead of challenging myself, this is kind of a lateral <laughs> move, I guess, rethinking it. Completed pages. I've already, I've just done a couple out of Color by Number Gardens by Alexandra Franzis. When I get sick, I tend to like to just stick to a couple books. And so I have a film where I have a lot of pages from her this month, because that book's really cute. Hashtags. So this, instead of just writing down the ones I'm participating in, I save a bunch of these on Instagram, and so I write them all out here, ones that I would be interested in, and who the handle, or uh, coloring might help a little if I zoom in. There we go. Um, this is not going to wind up being a short video. Um, so here's all the ones I listed for August or through the end of the year. Um, the handle or YouTube video um, dates posted, so some of these go through the end of the year and any extra information I need here. And then here I'm going to list the dates I post them on Instagram. If I complete one of these this month, I will highlight it. But I'm going to tell you all right now, the way I feel right now, there's no way. There's no way it's going to be all these. Um, unless, even if I had to go on leave and this was, and I just had to rest, um, I, I don't know. But anyway, um, this is the dream, but <laughs> probably not the reality. Buddy Colors, I did the same thing. Any Buddy Colors I want to participate in. Um, Tammy and I have a couple that are going on. We just need to figure out what months we're going to do them. I don't know if it will be this month, considering how things are. But we have our next dragon in the Baby Dragons book. We have our double-sided well, I can show, I'll show you that in the plan to color, but we have that. We also want to do one out of Woodland Watercolor, which is a recent release watercolor coloring book that we both want to do by the end of Watercolor Summer. I have my Modern Girls and Cats with Poet Spice. She did the double page cat party spread, which is my favorite picture in the book. And even if I just get the watercolor this month and the pencil next month, I want to do that page. Christina's Art Corner is doing a Witch Cat Spooky, which is from a new release book that I'm going to show you guys in the, the plan to. Um, I didn't get the page done last month, but I would like to get that one and this month's page done. Kathy from Spicy Cat Colors will have additions to these as well. I just haven't seen hers posted yet. So um, I added these boxes. I, I am currently not looking for Buddy Colors given current events um if i suddenly have like a complete recovery and i feel great like the second half of the month i might there's a couple of my friends i like to buddy color with a lot like i know ren and i haven't done a george Tufex's page in a while and stuff but i just don't want to do any additional ones right now just because i know i'm not going to be able to get them this month so this will be my new books and supplies list for um august we have this cute little boy down, chonky boy down here. And then my coloring stats will be put here. And I added those to this one ripped, but I just could not put it in there. And I think for right now, oops, that I'm not good at cutting washi tape. I need to get one of those little, um, I think I have one. One of those things that you can easily rip it off the end of the page. There we go. And uh, yeah, uh, I leave it open-ended because there's a chance I may want to add some other pages as we go along. But like June worked so well for me, I figured let's keep the same momentum for August. And then I just tried a couple different strategies on my pages. So um, I do, like I said, I I have horrible writing. I need to, I do want to work on some lettering. Um, but I mostly just use the stickers and the washi tape to pretty up the pages. And then I do my awful ruler uh, 
stencil stuff, which I'm better at this month. So I have a feeling with, with practice, with time come, or with practice comes improvement. All right, personal planner. I'll try to go through this one a little quicker. Um, so this one, I do some things different. I do this half year in pixels um, because again, I started this in July. Why do I keep wanting to say June? Jeez. Um, yeah, I'm not getting anything else done today. This is going to be it. Um, and I'm not, I don't feel any pressure to do this, guys. This is just me being stubborn. Like, I didn't want to, I took most of the week off of work because I feel so bad and I just, I hate it. I hate not, I hate just sitting. I hate it so much. And I know with being sick like this, this is what I have to do, but I'm still fighting it and I know I need to stop. All the mamas of the internet um, probably are going to come together and tell me to stop. <laughs> um, my own mama would tell me to knock it off and go lay down. Um, so I'll try to be quick. Half year in pixels. I saw this on a spread and I really liked it. Um, just each day I have, you know, mood, pain levels, and temperature outside because a lot of times my pain levels, not current events related, are tied to like extreme changes in weather. And then overall mood. I was just really curious how how that goes and it's interesting that so many of my days are split and that's because there's work me and then there's after work me <laughs> and uh so it's there's only a few days where it was a solid color which i found really interesting i was either extremely exhausted or um extremely productive and i find it funny i had extremely productive days then this is where i got sick and you just see the change like i find that funny and the pain levels, of course, are all illness level pains, not my typical pains. So um, I am keeping up with it. My book list, I actually had seven books for July. Um, when I'm not, when I'm feeling like this, I tend to read a lot. And so I only had like two books here until the last week of the month. And then I blew through like four books. Yeah. And so, um, Matt Deneman had a new release, Christopher Nuttall, who does the School to Magic series. If you like, if you won't like a grown-up Harry Potter, I highly recommend the School to Magic series. There's like 25 books, and it's, if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's, you can, no, no, it's not available anymore on Kindle Unlimited, but they're like $4 books, $5 books, and um, it's a great series. I didn't think any more books were being done, so I was very happy to see that. And there's like 25 books. It will, it, it's it's a good series. A um, dystopian book called Night Stalkers, and then Claire Vale, who I've never read before, was like kind of a young adult romance dystopian. I do get in moods for those, so I soaked up that trio. This month I have two audiobooks and then one of those dystopian romances. Project Hail Mary, y'all, by Andy Weir has got to be in my top 10 favorite books of all time. Um, it is very science-y, but if you like space and you like if you like, it's a, called a science fiction thriller. And if you like that kind of thing, it was so good. It was so good. Like, I, there's a lot of science talk. And it was just enough I could understand it. Um, and, but if you, if you just, it was definitely a big difference. From, this is why I say I read a variety of books. Because Project Hail Mary compared to, like, Claire Vale compared to Matt Deneman, such different books. Um, but if you like science fiction thrillers and you don't mind some science and like physics talk and stuff, just a little, like, I don't know, maybe a four or five on a scale to 10. It was okay, five, six. Um, you don't have to understand it all to get the gist of the book, basically. Oh, it was excellent. It was so good. The Martian, I just finished. I don't like that one as much. But it was still good. Um, I like his tone. And Will Wheaton uh, does the narration for The Martian, by the way, which is really cool. Movies um, and TV shows. 
We do have an ongoing Nick Cage challenge that we started in 2022, which our goal is to watch all of the Nick Cage books. Have I put Renfield on here yet? Yeah, I did. Okay. So I finally finished this out last month because I had to go back. I couldn't remember what we watched so far in the year. So these are standard movies. These are the Nick Cage movies we watched. We watched Renfield last month, guys. And let me tell you, Renfield has got to be one of my favorite Nick Cage movies. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 Nick Cages. Um, think if I had the little stickers of him with the beak cage from uh, the Wickerman, like I would totally, he'd have 4.5 out of 5. And um, uh, like I loved it. It was... The, one of the most iconic Nick Cage roles. My only reason he doesn't have a five is there's not enough Nick Cage in the movie. It's not actually about Nick, uh, Dracula. It's about Renfield. But it is so good. The movie itself is so much fun. So much fun. I don't understand why it didn't get the attention it did. Unless it was just when it came out. It came out with other more action. More, I guess, typical population movies like it's definitely different but i i had so much fun with it definitely one of my favorite nick cage movies by far um and then tv shows um i don't think we finished anything we started jojo's bizarre adventures last month and let me tell you that anime is weird i i don't know who i can recommend that to to be quite honest because it's gotten really <laughs> There's even episodes where we're like, man, that's a discomfort level of like 7 out of 10. But it's good. It's good. It's just, I'm surprised we hadn't watched it yet. And then I've been watching some stuff on my own. Like Golden Girls is always, Golden Girls and The Simpsons are always comfort shows for me. Um, I watched that latest Bridgerton special about Queen Charlotte. I love that. Probably my favorite of all the Bridgerton. I love that character. Um, so that was a great one. Watched some of RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm trying Abbott Elementary. I think I misspelled that. Um, and I like it. I just watch a little bit here and there. Okay. So that's all it for like the half year round. But of course I left a bunch of blank pages. July I did pretty well. I was trying to do a sticker a day. And then around the end of the month that went awry. Didn't really use this that much. This... This was a lot of testing um, and you can see I'm using the dyno um, stuff again for this. One line a day was basically just how did my day go. Of course I had numerous, it was one line in the book not just one sentence. I did fill it out for the whole month. I did go back and do that. Um, so I'm proud I did that. I did this productivity tracker had a talk with my therapist and she said work counts in this so I started to include work in this this is just showing how productive I was and it's very interesting to me you see as the month goes on I get more and more productive and I count these as like hour slots basically of doing stuff anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and I'm terrible at drawing so I don't know what to do with this other than just write stuff in and draw um, but you can see like the last two weeks I get super productive and then sick, sick, sick. Um, so that's kind of weird. This is why it's hard for me to do stuff and maintain. I did weekly spreads. I don't know how helpful these are for me. Um, you can see the last couple weeks I just gave up on adding the work stuff. I keep my work calendar, outlook calendar, fairly together. My memory is still pretty good that I don't have to um, really write it all down. It's one of the reasons I don't, I just, I'm probably going to have to toss a daily planner I have because I'm just not using it. Um, so I want to come up with something different for August. Okay. So that was that. We get to August. More of the amazing cat stickers. And yeah, this is about my speed right now, y'all. Nothing fancy. I do have a few more extra stickers that I'm using in this one, obviously, compared to the other one, the coloring one right now. This month is a month of appointments. Um, well, at least it was. <laughs> but 
I have like a hair appointment, therapy appointments every week. I see my sleep doc next week. I go back. I was supposed to have a physical on the 16th. Um, my cardiologist is on the 25th. Um, this was the month of appointments because I was doing so well. And well, this had to get canceled. I'm going to have to reschedule it. I had three goals this month. I wanted to go on the elliptical every other day for ten, just 10 minutes. Meditate 10 minutes five times a week. And update my planner at least every other day. And, and then I also wanted to track the chest inflammation. So right now the elliptical is just completely out the window. Um, meditating, I haven't had to need it as much because I'm already resting. But I do want to try to at least do 10 minutes a day. Planner updates, it wasn't every other day to start, but we're getting there now. Um, August at a glance, I bought a little photo printer. I've seen some other people use this kind of thing. And I was kind of thinking I could do like a month, a couple pages where I document, like take a picture a day or something, or every couple days, maybe write a little excerpt with it or something. I'd like to incorporate some journaling into this. So this is a test. We're going to see how this goes compared. Some days I might just put a sticker here. It's just going to be kind of open-ended. I have my one line a day and my um, therapist really encouraged me to come up with um, a gratitude list. She wanted me to do like three a day or three a week. I figured one a day is about my speed right now. <laughs> so um, I put that here. I think it's a great idea. And um, so like my first two of the week was uh, that I can afford audiobooks and that audiobooks are so prevalent right now because that's the only way I've been able to survive this week and then that I have a supporting and caring husband hus supportive and caring husband there we go and I still need to fill it in for yesterday but I was doing like I was creating all this yesterday productivity tracker again this is probably not going to be filled out much for August but I just wanted to keep the momentum going um, and I think that's it. I do want to come up with something weekly that's not, that's smaller enough to like list appointments, list to do's. Basically that's probably going to be is just putting a to do list for every day. So, but I'm not doing it this week, so I'm not worried about it right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is not going to be a short video. Okay. There was the first piece, second piece, um, inspiration, ideas, coloring ideas for the month is what we're going to call this, not plans, because as you'll see in my face to face, it is a wait and see right now as to when I'll feel better. If it is another mono flare up, it could be weeks, it could be a month, it could be when I originally had mono, it took six to eight weeks to even start feeling better. And um, if it's just a minor flare-up, hopefully it's just a couple weeks. I don't think it's a short-term thing. I would have already started feeling better. So we'll see. But okay, so these are ideas. Um, I would like to color in a Hannah Carlson book this month, especially because we're doing watercolor summer. And I do love using um, watercolors in these books, more so when the pages are treated. And I'm going to mention casually the tags I'm thinking. So like watercolor summer, of course, um, there was one hardbound August 23 that Jamie's coloring love is doing hair with flowers mania by Samway's coloring. Um, Ooh, I've got a couple in here that I didn't pull books for, but I'd love to do grains of gold. Cause that seems to be the book I'm working in the most. So I might pick one. Well, actually the next ones are these, this double set of hair with flowers. I was about to say flowers with hair. So that might be a good one to work on. Um, this is probably more my speed, but if I do want to do one with flowers and hair, that actually would be the next one to do. It would be cool to work in this front to back. The only page I haven't done is the book belongs to, which is fine. So maybe. 
but I kind of also want to color in the space book because I think this will be the first one I complete so I just don't think there's any hair and flowers in this one so I don't know be great to do one in both I mean why not if we're dreaming big there was a Mo Deborah Muller one uh, Tulita's Muller that goes through the end of the year but I haven't done a Deborah Muller page in a long time and I hate it because I want to do more from her books she's got some really fun Halloween books that are coming out and um, so I kind of like to do one from Luna this is my most recent one from her and y'all know how much I love the nighttime space books oh there was a flowers in here that might that might be an option so I could look through here and see there's another one so there's an idea um, I do love her space girls and aliens book I might do one out of here I also would love to do one out of crazy cat girls it looks like one of my pages bled through and I was kind of bummed about that this one but it's the blue and the green I probably would have used anyway so I think I can color over that and it'll be fine yeah I I'm thinking for a lot of these I there are a couple books I may have to buy again because there's been so much bleed through from previous markers and stuff that it's yellowed the pages enough that it's going to impact how I color them one of the tags is hot guy summer for poet which I've been wanting to do a page in I bought this book specifically for that cute guys of sci-fi and fantasy of course I could do one from Hannah Carlson uh, Christine Karen has a lot of uh, male characters in her books I actually went ahead and ordered like the cute guys throughout history one too yeah the point system did kind of like I have bought a lot of books in August that I need to I, I borrowed all my points at the beginning of August because I haven't felt well and so got to really come through on that one but I might do one out of here I might do one out of the throughout history or through the ages I don't know he looks pretty cool I do always love a good pirate actually you know which one I really want to do in here if I'm gonna do one because I think it's hilarious is this one the the Frankenstein like picture there like the weird Instagram feel of this picture is so funny I might do that one I would like to color in a Camellia Angel Cova book this month. If it's not mythical, it'll probably be Vacation or um, oh boy, Farm Miniatures maybe. But I just grabbed this one because this I haven't colored in this one yet either. Um, those can be fairly easy colors for me, so I'm hoping to get that this month. I want to color in this one so bad this is by far my favorite rj hampson book because he does the versions of the page with like black backgrounds versus also images with the regular backgrounds now i would have been perfectly happy with the book with just the dark backgrounds but everybody's different a lot of people don't necessarily like that or amazon doesn't print it well and it comes out more of a gray or something but like oh that picture is just stunning i really want to do a page out of this book this month because i have not done one yet i love the the tiger one too anyway showing y'all mostly the nighttime here's woodland watercolor this is the claire therese gray the book i was talking about that tammy and i want to do a buddy color out of and it's on watercolor paper I love that one with all the squirrels we haven't picked a page yet I have a feeling this one's gonna either be the end of the month or next month watercolor is really something I can't do from my couch um, not easily unless I'm just using the pencils and then I come in here and activate them I just don't it's too many cats and things in there as it is in my corner it's a constant mess because I'm dragging things in and out there was a Stratton Peterson tag Stratton Peterson in August by coloring bumblebee um, I don't have his nature's magic though I'd like to get it I'd love to do one out of mystic animals because I haven't yet and these are incredible what I'm going to use in these I can't tell you right now 
a lot of it's going to depend on how much time I can spend at my desk, which right now is not very much. Would love to do the cat one in here, of course. But a lot of it's going to depend on how much I can sit here versus what I can do on the couch. Disney books. I'm going to color in more than one Disney book this month. It just has to happen. I keep getting or a Hatchet Heroes book because I'm collecting so many and they're so good and I just haven't had the time. Um, the Disney one I'm working through front to back and these are fairly easy images so I do anticipate I will at least do one picture in here so that's why I'm showing this one. But um, I do want to participate in some of Disney Meg's coloring. Um, Kathy from Spicy Cat Colors usually has a Disney color along each month um, that I would like to participate in. So um, definitely want to take advantage of the Disney books. And those are, I think I can use the paint markers and stuff from the couch. Big Dreams, I would love to do the next page in this, the Kawaii Tarot. And um, I would love to make this iridescent pencil watercolor thing a theme through the book so we're gonna see i already am getting some ideas for this page but i would love to just make them all a similar um so like it would look like a deck of them being really shiny and iridescent and pretty I think that would be a lot of fun, but I don't know. A lot of times I get stuck in themes for books and then I don't get motivated to color in them because that's not where I'm at right now. I really, 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 really want to do a page in this book. This is by far one of my favorite of the, uh, the art therapy books. I really was looking at the mermaids one I just got and then I've got nature. Do I have? Maybe I don't. I thought I did. But then I've got another one. But I think it's got to be this one. Because this is one I really feel like I could complete. Like front to back. Because I love all the pictures in here. And I feel like these could be very easy with some watercolor. And possibly pencil. So. It's a dream. I've really been enjoying coloring out of Alexandra Frenzies' books. And Joshua Dunbar's books the last few months. Um. I'm tr I would love to do at least two pages a month from each of them right now, um, even if it's just marker. And I've been enjoying reusing palettes. So like the palette I used for the tarot page, I ended up using in this beach picture on the Summer Mandala's one. Um, I like taking a palette and using it like, you know, for a, a non-mandala page and then using it for mandalas. And um, I had a lot of fun doing that, so I might do that again. Maybe do a page out of here. And I want to do one out of Y2K Mandalas. I actually want to use the palette I did for Joshua Dunbar's last month. I think I'm going to use this one if I can find an appropriate page. But this, she just released Spooky Mandalas, which will be here tomorrow. But I don't know if that color palette will work in here, so I might wait. And do it for spooky but that's kind of what I want to do is when I go the trouble of picking a palette using it more than one page I think I'm all about efficiency and then for Joshua Dunbar boy I don't know there's so many like Alexander Verenzi's I, I want to color in all their books but I'm going to try to keep to the summer theme and so I would like to do another page in Island Cuties since I just started this one this is straight up marker so we'd start on, I'd do that one next. And then Easy Summer, I would like to do another page, possibly like this with the Museum Aquarelle, or just Marker. I don't know. I really love that picture, but I just definitely don't have the energy right now. So maybe just something, I know uh, Poets also got a fruit one, so I bet there's... It's like farm fresh fruit or something. So I bet there's a good make that looks like an apple pie. That would be a good one for hers, actually. I saw someone do a really pretty version of that the other day. Um, tomatoes are fruit. That would work. So, but they're very cute. You know that pick, that one right there I love. So, we might mix it up. Some of these easier pages, I might just do marker. 
And then the ones that I feel so inclined, I might do the watercolor and pastels and just make this a mix of a book. Because I have found when I use watercolor on multiple pages, it can get, you can see like this one's getting a little warped. So I might be best to spread it out throughout the book so it's not warping the entire book. This is the spooky coloring book that I was telling you about. A new coloring book artist to me, Sarah Sizewicks. I that was not right, but this book is adorable and it's based on her cat named Bagheera, which Bagheera, you know, had been having some health issues the past few months. So the instant I saw this book, it's spooky, it's witch stuff, it's cats, just checking all those boxes. And Christina's Art Corner is doing a color along in this book. The cover page, this intro page was last month. Um, I do want to do that. And then I think the next picture is, I feel like it's here in the front, this one with the Cat Pacino. So I really want to do these and I want to use some watercolors as a base. I told y'all my grand idea here. I'm thinking the new graphite pencils I got from Derwent. Um, using a very muted kind of spooky palette on this with some dark graphite type colors. So the graphite pencils, um, water activating them. I have the Kuretake graphite colors as well to give me the really deep color. And then what was the pencils? I put those over there. What were the pencils? I think they were the Castle Art metallic pencils, trying to use the metallic pencils on top of this. So this is from Hannah Carlson's Patreon. Hannah Carlson. Hannah Lynn, sorry. Hannah Lynn's Patreon last month. And I want to make her like a spooky lady of the lake. Like maybe give her like, I don't know, zombie skin tone or like a gray skin tone. Not, you know, super blood and gore, but just enough to, I, I don't know. Y'all know how I am about that kind of stuff. I, I don't like coloring things like I'm supposed to, so... I have ideas for this and that's why I, I printed out on a watercolor friendly paper that we're going to test. I really want to use my Arteza Real Brush Pens in a Teresa Goodridge book, which I haven't done this year. Those are always perfect for watercolor summer because they're watercolor brushes. I have not colored in it. It's a cat's world. I know obviously my favorite Teresa Goodridge book. That would be such a fun picture. Maybe we could do that one. I don't know if I would just use the real brush pens though. You know, that would be a good one too for just watercolor. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be, this is gonna be the hard part is picking one of these. We might do two. We might do one with the real brush pens. And they might not both be out of this book, but, cause she does have a new autumn harvest one. But I might do one, I did one last year with just watercolors layered on top of each other. Everybody seemed to love that and I was very pleased with how it turned out. So we might do one of those. And then real brush pens do well in small spaces to blend. So like that page that had, I don't know about this page, but like this page with all the little bits and pieces would be a great page for those. So cute. I haven't looked through this since last August. That would be a great page. So yeah, I want to do a page in here this month. I'm just not sure what we're going to do in here, but it is going to be for watercolor summer. Know that um, Anne is not doing an official, Anne's Colorful Life is not doing an official Creative Haven tag, but she is focusing on like Creative Haven books for the month. And so it gave me some inspiration. My buddy color with Poet Spice, this is the, this is very ambitious, but this is the page I want to do. I love it. It's my, it's so fun. It's my favorite picture in the book. Um, I already know I want to carefully plan and color all these cats to match the cats I've had over the years and my current four that I have. It might even add some of the not my cats in here because um, I don't know if I have enough, but just this feels like this could be a very personal page for me. It's definitely going to have to have some type of base, like a watercolor base and then pencils. But I'm telling you, this will not be done this month. I'm hoping by the end of September, maybe October. But 
I need to message her and let her know. Because I do really want to. I thought that was a little ambitious, but I really do want to do it. Finally, um, we, Tammy and I did, and I do need to post these to Instagram. Our buddy color double page spread. We both did the dragon in July. They both turned out great. Um, she didn't have hers posted yet, I think, when I did my complete of pages, but um, it might be on Instagram now. And then um, the cat one's next. I just don't know when ours are very open ended too, just because we're both very we're both busy. And uh, so I don't know when we'll do this one, but it is part of the double page spread. And then finally, Baby Dragons, we are close, to, I'm close to finishing this. She's got some more pages because she started this later than I did. But this will be the first non-color by number book that I will finish. And it is split in half, so I need to decide what to do with the second set of images. Because um, I'm not going to color these again. But the next one up, I did the crystal one. We have two, I have two more. I have the Robot Dragon, which is probably the next one we need to do. This is going to be probably some level of metallic or watercolors. And then we have, or I have, um, we both have this picture as well. And I think I'd make this the last picture because that Robot one and the Crystal one I'm struggling with. But I do want to finish them. I meant to bring it in here, but I am too tired to go up and get it. Um, I actually do plan to complete a book this month. It is the Halloween Ceramic Tile Color by Number by Prachi Dewan Sachdeva. I've got like ten and a half pages left in that. And the way things are looking this month, I think I, I'm i going to complete a lot of pages in that. Um, and Color by Number Gardens by Alexandra Franzese. While I don't think I'll finish it this month, the I'm enjoying it so much that if I continue to be ill, <laughs> that'll probably be like a comfort book for me this month. So might even have her hers done. Well, hers is going to be different because you have the color by number set and then the non-color by number. And I actually think I do want to do both sets in that one. So that one will take a little longer. I have her fairy houses one too, and it was hard to pick, but I think I like the gardens one more right now. Um, I think that's it guys. I've got, like I said, the, the next piece is just a 16, 15 minute face to face, just filling y'all in on what's going on. Um, and I hope to do more front facing videos in the future. It's just like right now, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, my, what I want to do is do flip through videos tomorrow. You know what? No. I was going to do flip through videos tomorrow and then my coloring book collection update Sunday. No. Um, we're going to do the flip throughs this weekend because I get two more tomorrow. I'll probably wait till Sunday to do those. And then the book collection update will probably be next Friday. I just, I see how tired I already am with doing this one and I need to go rest. So we're just going to, I'm just going to make the call right now. <laughs> And y'all may not even get the flip throughs. I don't know. We're going to have to see. But anyway, so if you do want to see me front face ranting a little bit about my health and the frustrations I have with doctors right now and taking me seriously, um, feel free to watch that. Like I said, if you don't, that's cool. Um, I'm really at the point. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> But I do like to keep you guys updated on all aspects of my life and the good and the bad. And it just, it's so frustrating. And I, I don't feel like down and depressed very much right now, except I just feel down because I want to be doing stuff. I built every time I do this and I start to build momentum like this. And if, and I know some of y'all are going to be like, well, maybe you were trying to do too much, y'all. I was getting on the treadmill going at a heart rate of maybe 110 for 10 minutes every other day and I only did that for two weeks um, doing deep breathing meditation for 10 minutes a day um, not every day but like three or four days out of the week mostly work week that other than keeping up my planner that's all the major extra stuff I've been doing consistently. If I can't add that little 
to my life without getting severely sick, then this is a bigger problem than just fibromyalgia. And I need somebody to take me seriously because I'm going to wind up bed bound for the rest of my life and unable to work if this keeps up. And I just, I'm terrified it's going that route. Um, it's already enough of, and I haven't had, if this is a flare up, I have not had a flare up like this in years. It's probably been four or five at this point. It's been a long time. Um, and it, I don't recall it ever being this severe. So um, it could be all the stress in my life. The moment I stopped to take a breath, my body said, okay, now you're going to pay for all that. It could very well be that too. And so I have to take a close look at that. At the end of the day, guys, I have to take care of my health. I have to be able to rest and recover. No matter what that means, because... I'm just going to be sick for longer and then this will just, if I don't figure out how to keep this from happening over and over again, it's, I'm not going to be able to function like, I can't function like a normal adult now, but I definitely won't even be able to do basic stuff, even the most basic of things. And, and just, yeah, anyway, so that's one of the reasons I'm just frustrated and my therapist and I had a long talk about that, but I'm trying to keep up with the with the habits I can. I'm trying to modify my systems to fit what I what's best for me right now without giving up on them entirely, which is progress. Most of the time in the past, I would have just given up and said screw it for another six months, but I'm trying, so we'll see. Anyway, guys, uh, feel free to watch that piece. I should be back hopefully Sunday with some, probably five books worth of flip throughs. Um, five, six books. If I don't do it Sunday, then it'll be next weekend. So, um, but I'm hoping Sunday I can at least get the new book flip through. Y'all take care of yourself and let's move on to the next piece. All right, I'm going to try this again. I just went on a 15 minute rant about my experience yesterday. Um, I know this is the worst possible time to do like front facing video because I'm sick, but this is one of those times I really don't care <laughs> too much about how I look. And, and I know Kathy from Spicy Cat Colors is always encouraging us to do more front facing videos. And um, I saw my friend Tammy had done one the other day and she looks amazing. I just went with the hair in a ponytail. Um, about the only thing I did to prepare for this was put a regular t-shirt on because I have a strappy tank top on. And like, y'all, y'all gonna have to pay for that kind of skin exposure here. <laughs> that's not, not that that's something I want to do. I'm just saying like, that's more skin than I'm willing to part with publicly on the internet. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, I mentioned, if you saw my community post and Instagram post earlier this week, starting Saturday, I woke up with my lymph nodes just aching under my right arm. And it's progressed since then to just all kinds of symptoms. Um, I've tested negative for COVID. Honestly, it checks all the boxes for either, it feels just like when I was sick with mono about a decade ago, with the exception of that weird chest pain that was happening over here. So I went to see the doctor yesterday. I know I am very confident it's a viral infection and I feel strongly that it is like Epstein-Barr, which is what, what we call mono. I feel like it's either a flare up of that. It's a flare up of some sort of undiagnosed autoimmune disorder. Like I feel like it's a, it's a big one instead of just, it could be myocarditis, like just the way it came on, how rarely we leave this house. I mean, I don't know where I would have picked it up. There's no telling, um, but I already have had mono. So that virus is already still sitting in my body. And for some people with low immune, low immunity um, and with autoimmune disorders that EBV number can kick back up and you can have a mono flare up or like mono again, basically. And so I, I feel strongly like it's something like that. 
Um, so when I went to the doctor yesterday, it wasn't that a viral infection. I know you can't cure with antibiotics or anything. You just have to rest and wait it out. What I was trying to get was A, make sure that the chest pain isn't something different. B, figure out why I had two weeks of chest inflammation prior to this and why I wonder if that kicked off something like a myocarditis thing. Um, and three, get some basic blood work done to make sure it's not the EBV values again or whatever it's called um, to make sure it's not something long term so I can go ahead and start talking to my job about a leave of absence because I worked through most of my mono experience it took about six to eight weeks and I worked through most of it but it wasn't a very highly intense job and my and so I had a lot of flexibility this is a very high performing high intensity job and I tried to work a few hours Tuesday and Wednesday. All it did was make me feel worse. Uh, yesterday and today, I have felt worse than I have pretty much all week, with the exception of Monday morning. Um, yeah, I, I had to, so I talked to my manager and I took the rest of the week off. Honestly, more than anything right now, I'm more worried about making mistakes on email campaigns or my regular work that is going to cause problems with you know, like other campaigns the team's doing, like we uh, do QA on like each other's campaigns and stuff. And I don't want to cause an error on somebody's campaign because I am not there enough to be as sharp as I need to be on this stuff. And um, so that was what my goal from yesterday. And like, I got none of it. I got some steroids thrown at me and basically dismissed. Um, only reason I got an ECG is I insisted on it. They didn't find, my mom, uh, didn't even know she had heart issues till she was 35 when somebody finally caught something they should have caught when they were, when she was a kid. And so my biggest fear has always been ever since I started seeing the cardiologists in my past few years of getting all these weird symptoms, nobody seems to know anything about, um, that's been one of my biggest fears is that there's something going on there and nobody's going to pick it up because they just assume it's because of my fiber or my depression or my anxiety or pray tell that I'm overweight. You know, not like I've gotten that comment before, even though all my lab numbers other than, you know, all my basic things always come back. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to get ranting about it again. But I knew it was going to go bad yesterday because I explained and I told you guys that for a couple weeks I had a costochondritis flare up in my chest when I started doing more like deep breathing meditation exercises. It, it just breathing hard, just breathing deeply aggravates it, um, which is pretty sad. I feel like I'm just, just want to hang it up and become just bed bound for the rest of my life. Um... And that's what the doctors have always said it is. So that's why I assumed it was. It's always been hot to the touch. And I told her this yesterday. And I said I had two weeks of that. It seemed like it was finally getting a little better because I dialed back on stuff. I stopped getting on the elliptical. I keep calling it a treadmill. It's an elliptical. And then, boom, Saturday this started. And she was like, well, costiochondritis doesn't feel hot to the touch. And I'm like, ma'am... All you got to do is go right here and touch it, and it's hot. And she didn't bother to do that. No doctor that has told me that, and I have told them that it feels hot to the touch. It's like they don't believe me, or I don't. My rheumatologist actually was like, I don't think you know what inflammation is. Sir, I know what inflammation is. I know what my body temperature is like. I know what it um, just... So she presses around my chest a little bit. And of course it hurts. She's like, tell me if it hurts. It hurts. And she's like, oh, well, if it's hurting like that, then it's not a problem with your heart. It's probably costochondritis. Ma'am, did you not just say it wasn't that? Because the heat's like one of the number one tells I have that something is going on. So I already knew it was going to go bad. 
And when I tried to press for answers, then it became a, well, follow up with your cardiologist or your rheumatologist. Again, ma'am, I don't see my cardiologist till the 26th. If, and if I have a viral infection going on right now, they're probably just going to assume it's part of the freaking infection, even though it started long before that. And my rheumatologist is worse than you, which is hard pressed, but I just told you guys what he told me. So, um, I'm going to have to find another rheumatologist anyway, and you're talking at least a six month wait for that. This will be the third rheumatologist I've had in two years, which I'm sure makes me see, seem like I'm hypochondriac. But none of them are taking me seriously. Um, okay. This will be a slightly less longer rant than the other one. Anyway. She said, yeah, it's a viral infection. Here are some steroids. I'm like, but steroid, you know, and I know a viral infection, antibiotics are, aren't, aren't going to treat it. I'm like, what are the steroids for? And she's like, what? Well, she said steroids and you can't take ibuprofen while you're on it. I'm like, I'm running a low grade fever. Everything from my chest up feels like it's just boiling hot all the time. If I get up, I got up, ran a string across the bed a few times for Leroy this morning to play with. And I started sweating. Like, just that little bit of exertion was enough to set me off. Like, feeding the cats, I almost need a little fan, personal fan, on me as I'm walking around. And I haven't had this these types of issues in years. And I was like... <sighs> anyway, she said that. And I'm like, you can't run a basic panel. My regular doctor is the one that told me I had mono. So why can't you just run a basic panel to check for the basic things that you normally would? I don't know what I'm going to do in a few weeks when I go see her. Um, so she's new to me. All the other doctors, I can't remember if I said this in this video or not. All the other doctors I've had there have been excellent. But the place must suck to work at because they all leave. And I keep losing the good ones. And so she was new and I, first time I just had a bad experience there and, but she's like, well, you can't take ibuprofen and stuff with the steroids. And I'm like, but that is the only way I can keep my fever and stuff down. And, um, she's like, well, you can take Tylenol. Tylenol does nothing for me. It might as well just be taking sugar pills. It's ridiculous. Um, and she's like, well, the steroids act as anti-inflammatory. Okay, that might help some of the issue with my chest. But my chest is not the primary issue right now. Right now, my issue is my um, lymph nodes. In, now, now, over in here and across here are starting to ache. And I'm boiling hot all the time. And I'm exhausted, like just fatigue beyond anything I've experienced in two or three years probably and or four years and I was like it's not gonna help with anything else and she's like yeah just rest is gonna do it and and she's like well if it was mono we would treat it the same why can't you check I can't I can't just go in there to work and be like well, I need another week off, but we may have to do this on a week-to-week -week basis. No, they're going to want me to put in a leave of absence, and I don't want to put in. Now is not a good time. It's never a good time, but there has been so much happening in inner office politics at work right now that I do not feel like this is a good time to be taking any time off, And but I will if I'm sick. I will if I have to, and I've talked to my therapist about it, and I've, you know, so we'll see how this weekend goes. We'll see how how it goes come Monday. Here comes Bagheera. He doesn't know I'm recording. Normally he wouldn't scream this much. I keep telling people he screams. And nobody believes me. But um. I just. It's like she just wanted to go with the easiest answer. And, and if I had been a normal. Healthy person with no big history. Of it, I would have said, yeah, that, and I wouldn't have probably even went in if it hadn't been for the chest pain. Because, I, again, I know viruses, you can't, unless it's an antiviral, you can't um, 
Just throw antibiotics at those. I am very well aware of that. Probably because of my history. Um, but, like, again, though, given my history, wouldn't you just want to be sure it's not something long-term? Because then she's like, well, if you still feel this way next week, come back and we'll run some more tests and a check that x-ray. And I was like, I just, it went bad. I'm not happy. The steroid shot they gave me yesterday totally screwed up my sleep last night. And that's the one thing I need more than anything right now is sleep. So I'm getting the actual steroid pills today. I'm going to wait and start taking them first thing in the morning. Tomorrow morning, all they're doing is helping a little bit with the inflammation here. They're not doing anything for the other symptoms. And now I don't even have ibuprofen to fall back on. So, not feeling great. I really have some videos I would like to do this weekend, but we're probably just going to make them quick videos, and if I just can't do them, we're just not going to do them. Um, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't know when I said this was gonna, I was going to post a live stream that something was going to go wrong, because it always does. And, um, yeah, so... Not happy. Um, just, I'll probably be, I, I mean, I've been too tired to color. I've just been listening to audiobooks um, a lot of days. And now I'm starting to get stir crazy because I don't want to just listen to audiobooks. And just even the smallest amount of exertion really sets me off. It makes my throat swollen and scratchy. Like I said, just textbook mono experience but so I'm worried I'm worried how long this is going to last but until I can get somebody to I guess I'm going to have to wait and I guess if I'm still feeling bad on Monday I'm going to have to talk to my boss about it and figure out what we're going to do and it really sucks but I don't know what else to do and if this is me getting mono again it is probably due to the stress and experience of my life for the past 12 months and my immune system just went went awry and I should have known this was coming it it all waited until I had a moment to breathe in July and when I started saying hey now I feel like I can start you know building healthy habits and stuff it's like it waited till I absolutely wasn't just non-stop working and then was like, oh, okay, I can get sick now. Which, I appreciate the fact that it's, my body is that considerate. However, the severity of it is probably matches right up with how much stress I've been put through. So, or I've been through. So, I don't know what this means. And I just wish, I wish I had a doctor that was would look at me whole, wholly, holistically across the board with all these weird symptoms that have come up the last th last three years, five years, and just would be like, "Hey, let's so, let's run some deeper tests just to rule out stuff." So, okay, my husband's back with the medicine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop because <laughs> that is. I think enough ranting for today and I want to be able to get the first half of this video posted and then I'm going to be on the couch the rest of the day. I'm part of a closed beta for um, a game that a lot of people have been waiting to come out. I, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, Palia or like My Time in Palia or something like that. But it's supposed to be kind of like Sim Simish? Sims game-ish with like an RPG element kind of thrown in and like like all my favorite types of games like um, kind of rolled in together and I'm really excited I made it through to the closed beta so um, I might fire that up and play it some this weekend but like I said even just doing this and the other video today will just be enough I will just not be able to do much more today so that might have to wait Anyway, guys, I appreciate the support. I, like I said, I'm sorry. Y'all, if you've been around for a while, you know how this goes. The moment I start setting up plans and goals, 
Um, usually my body realizes that's the time that it can get sick. And so here we are. But at least it's not COVID. I, I still mask everywhere and I still use a ton of hand sanitizer. So I just, I feel like, like I said, I'm more and more convinced this was something that was already going on in my body that's flaring up. But apparently I just got to wait, you know, a month or at the rate we're going, it's probably going to be another month. And by then I will start to feel better. And then they'll be like, no, it wasn't anything like, anyway. All right. Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to end this one. I have some new book flip throughs. I'm going to try at the very least to do those this weekend. If not tomorrow, then Sunday. I also have my coloring book uh, collection haul update video I would like to do, but if we do it, it's going to be a very quick video. We'll see. I don't want to get behind on videos. I'm getting stir crazy. I want to be doing stuff, and I just don't have the energy to. And the cats are squabbling because Leroy is fired up this morning. And unfortunately, he's having a good week, but I can't, I don't have the ability to play with him so he is trying to play with the other cats and he doesn't know how to play so all right well y'all take care i hope you have a good weekend maybe maybe things i'll try to be a little i'll try maybe this is just a small flare-up maybe by monday i'll be feeling a lot better i'll keep you guys updated um thanks and bye for now